Welcome to the Parsha Perspective. Each week, we will delve deep in a weekly Torah portion to find a practical and insightful way to enhance your daily life. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Rabbi Shalom Yimini, and each week we'll look into the weekly Torah portion to find practical and insightful ways to enhance your daily life. This week's Parsha Perspectives in honor of the immediate and speedy recovery of Daniel Aaron Moshe Ben Rus, may he and all those who need Rafua Shalema experience God's mercy and compassion. This week's Parsha Perspective is in loving memory of Leah Mincha Basak of Yosef, Edward Ben Ephraim, Shlomo Ben Edward, and Yerachmin Daniel Ben Gedalia. May the souls be uplifted and may the memories be a blessing. This week is a double Torah portion as we finish the third book of the Torah, Sefer Vayikra. Our Parshas are Parshas Bahar and Bechukaisai, You Are Worthy. Our parshas begin with an overview of the laws of Shemitah and Yovel. Shemitah is a seven-year cycle in which we may farm the land for six years, but on the seventh year we must let the land rest. The Yovel cycle, which also requires letting the land rest, is the first year after seven Shemitah cycles. All Jewish slaves must be released and all properties must be reverted back to their original owners. The Torah then lists the amazing rewards that God will bestow upon us for following His Torah and listening to His commandments. However, the Parsha also informs us of the punishments that will be given if we disobey God's commandments, heaven forbid. However, a question comes to mind. At the beginning of Parsha's Bahar, where it discusses the Shemitah and the Yovel cycles, the Torah asks a question. And if you shall ask, what are we going to eat in the seventh year if we cannot plant, if we cannot gather our crop? HaKadosh Baruch Hu responds and says, I will ordain my blessing. I will ordain my blessing for you in the sixth year, so it shall yield crop sufficient for three. Besides the fact that the Torah doesn't usually ask this type of question, the previous Pasuk already mentions the blessings of abundance. So why does the Torah repeat the blessings of abundance for following the laws of Shemitah and Yavu? The Rabbeinu Bachayar of Bach ibn Asher gives a simple explanation. He writes that the Pasuk is not referring to the Shemitah year, but rather the eighth year, the year after Yavu. As mentioned above, the first year after seven Shemitah cycles was another sabbatical year, Yavu. The Rabbeinu Bachai explains that it is common practice to eat the yield of your crop a year later, but not necessarily two years later, meaning that the sixth year has to provide for the seventh, but not necessarily for the eighth, and therefore the Pasuk repeats the blessings with an emphasis on the eighth year, the year of Yavu. However, the Nitziv, Rav Naftali Tzvi Yehuda Berlin, the famous head of Yeshiva of Velazhin, gives a deeper and more profound explanation. He writes that the Torah reiterates the blessing for a very specific purpose, to alleviate the worry of those who feel unworthy. For it is nothing short of a miracle that the ground yield crop for three years in one harvest cycle. The Nitziv explains that the worry is not necessarily a lack of emuna, a lack of trust, a lack of faith, but rather a feeling of not deserving such an open blessing and such an open miracle. And therefore the Torah reiterates it and repeats the guarantee of abundance to encompass the entire nation. The blessing of abundance is not just for the righteous people who follow the laws, but for those who feel unworthy, those who feel undeserving of such immense blessings. As the Pasuk states, And I will command, I will ordain my blessing upon you, irrespective of perceived worthiness or lack thereof. This lesson is ever more relevant as we just celebrated Lag Omer earlier this week. Lag Omer is a profound, holy, and spiritual day with immense blessings and spiritual growth opportunities. And this window of opportunity is open, ready, and available to all of God's children, especially those who share His light with the world. In our daily life, it is imperative that we feel worthy and deserving of happiness, growth, and fulfillment. It is only by believing that we are deserving of good things in life that we can indeed receive more and appreciate them. Studies show that individuals who feel worthy are more likely to have a positive outlook and a greater appreciation for life. And when faced with failure or negativity, they bounce back quicker with confidence, with faith, and with optimism. They are willing to take great risks and achieve even greater things because they recognize the inherent value of themselves, the value of others, and their special, unique place in this world. There's a great, powerful quote from our Lord Jonathan Sachs. The more you celebrate the good, the more good you discover that is worthy of celebration. Have a great weekend and a good Shabbos.
Thank you for tuning in to The Partial Perspective. Check out our website, thepartialperspective.com. Send thoughts and comments to thepartialperspective at gmail.com. Till next time, thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.